Hey everyone, uh, this is Ray Ramirez. Um, last night, uh, Charlie Villarreal came over to the house and we uh, were talking about uh, tying the braided shrimp. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and explain to you the whole process that Charlie taught me about tying the braided shrimp. Uh, there's going to be some things that uh, Charlie's going to include in this particular uh, demonstration that are going to be very hard to duplicate in just slides only. But remember, uh, Charlie's going to be tying this particular uh, fly in person uh, this coming uh, Tuesday uh, on uh, October 1st at uh, the Bass Pro Shop at 6.30. So come on over and uh, learn from the master at that particular time. Uh, he uh, uh, told us that there were different kinds of materials that we were going to be needing. And uh, what's interesting is he used a Gamakatsu SS-15. Uh, uh, and here he used a uh, size 4. Uh, the SC-15 is a little bit uh, thinner uh, steel or stainless steel uh, but this one's just a little bit thicker so it works out really good a little bit uh, heavier and so it'll turn the uh, the fly over to uh, right hook down um, as far as thread is concerned he uses two types of thread one is a brown thread uh, for the body and then a red thread for the tail so it'll match the color of the uh, of the uh, different uh, sharpie which is going to be a red sharpie however uh, I'll talk more about this at the very end and we used 140 denier uh, thread as far as the body he used ultra hair in this particular um, uh, pattern but uh, Puglisi fibers or any uh, type of uh, of uh, you know uh, body material will work uh, as far as the eyes, he used a black medium bead chain eyes, and this uh, is light enough to keep the fly from turning over. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And then a tail guard. I didn't know how else to um, to describe this. I initially I called it a weed guard, and I left a slide there that uh, had the word weed guard. Uh, we used a 30-pound uh, monofilament uh, line so for that uh, part of it, and we'll explain it. And, of course, the red Sharpie. Uh, so here we have the uh, hook on the, on the vise, and we start close to the uh, beginning or right by the eye, and then move back, and we move back just in front of the barb, between the barb and the point. Of the hook and that's about as far as we need to get and uh, to that we're going to add some uh, ultra hair uh, but first we have to prepare it we're going to separate the ultra hair and ultra hair comes in nine inch uh, hanks and the amount of material I think the best way to describe it I'm going to try to do it in the next few slides is to basically think of a, um, a pen about the thickness of a pen and then if I stretch the uh, the hank uh, a little bit it should be about the width or the, the size of uh, a pen and of course you notice on the slide on the the photograph on the right that when I loosen up it actually goes to about three, maybe even four times the size of the pen. But that'll give you a good idea of about how much material that we're going to, to tie. And of course, Charlie's going to prepare this already and figure that out for you on, uh, on Tuesday. So here we're going to add the first layer, and we're going to start just about in front of the hook point, and we're going to work toward back toward the hook point a little bit further uh, to add the first uh, layer, the first three inch section of, uh, of, uh, of Hank to the, to the hook. And to that, we're going to add another one. Again, we start ahead of it and then move back and add the second layer. 
and uh, we place that in front of the base and, and tie it very securely to the hook point. Be careful not to uh, roll the, uh, the hair uh, from one side to the other. To keep it on the top part of the, uh, of the body. And then we do the same thing with the third one. And here in this particular case, it's a little bit longer. And it's not trimmed there, but we did trim it uh, when we actually uh, put it in, in the uh, preparation. And so uh, we've secured it quite a bit. You'll see uh, the wraps there. It formed a fairly thick body, and that's all going to be covered by the uh, chenille or estaz and, and eyes. Okay, the next thing that we're going to be doing, and here's the hard part, and here's the part that uh, is going to be really hard to show. So you're going to have to imagine that what we're going to do is we're going to alternate the strands. So we have to separate them first, and then alternate the strands and braid it. If you've never braided before, um, just ask a... Uh, uh, a lady out there that's got pigtails, or maybe some of you guys may have pigtails, but uh, that's uh, that's something that uh, a skill that we're going to have to learn to use in this particular uh, fly. So that looks like a, a great uh, you know uh, uh, skill to learn. So we continue braiding, and uh, what Charlie recommends is we go to uh, to make about eight uh, segments on the fly. The other thing I want for you all to notice is, you notice that red bobbin down there? Uh, we just set it down there. We're going to be ready to use that when we're going to tie the tail, which is going to be coming up in just a little bit. And then uh, in this particular slide, we've completed the braiding and then we hold on to it uh, firmly. You don't want to lose all of that uh, all that fine work that you did. Once we have that together, then we're going to prepare it. And what Charlie did before we actually tied the thread is he trimmed uh, the tail because it'll make it a little bit easier when we whip finish it. And uh, that's what we're going to do. And you notice here uh, the, t the extra material is trimmed and he's uh, whip finishing it and uh, you know getting it ready uh, we are going to put some glue on that uh, that those wraps so don't be too concerned yet about that once uh, that uh, you have the uh, the braids done and the tail tied off uh, notice that it, it may, kind of makes a little humpback pattern and that humpback pattern is uh, very shrimp-like. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put uh, here, again, I said a, a weed guard, but I, a really a tail guard. And this is going to be done so that we can keep the tail, uh, the braids right there, from uh, fouling the hook. So uh, what's done right here is uh, the... 30-pound uh, monofilament is tied on one side and then taken to the other side on the top. And eventually that uh, that tail is going to go uh, up above that and the, the uh, tail guard is going to go below. So here's how we do that. Once we've secured one side and then secured the other side, you have the wraps. And then what we begin to do is position the tail by having it and taking it between the the tail guard and we continue going through that and then right here it basically is up on top and uh, we have now something that looks a little shrimpy. Now we're going to put the body and what uh, Charlie recommends is that we use some estaz. This is a very interesting estaz. It comes from Grandi UV lights and it's called uh, glisten floss fibers and he's using a little peach color here uh, to kind of make uh, a uh, a match to the tan uh, uh, ultra hair then it's wrapped around once it's uh, tied on it's wrapped 
And if you have a rotary vise, well, that's simple. Just hold the uh, staz and then turn the uh, the head till it gets completely wrapped. As you go forward, don't go too, too far. Give yourself a little bit of space at the end because you're going to put eyes. And the type of eyes that uh, Charlie recommends are these uh, medium uh, bead chain eyes. And you're going to cut, uh, you know, a link so that you have two on either side. To, you all know how to do that. And then you figure eight wrap it so that it's stuck up on top. The eyes, if they were too large, would be heavy enough to flip the fly over. These do not seem to be uh, that heavy, and uh, you can go ahead and, and wrap it all through. Once you've got it wrapped, you tie it off, and then the next thing that you're going to do to that is uh, add some crystal flash to create an antenna. And that antenna, not the best photograph, but you can see the antenna is is moving back uh, beyond the eyes. Then uh, this is uh, really neat. I mean, what uh, Charlie did was he used his thumb to help shape the tail. So if you see his uh, nail there, basically he's using it as a guide to make a little fan-shaped uh, tail on the sh on the shrimp. And he takes it all the way around and look, voila. Now what he also will do is once that uh, tail is, is done, he doesn't he uh, trims the top and the bottom of that particular tail and, and th thins it out a little bit before he adds to it uh, some, uh, some of that uh, uh, red paint from the Sharpie. And uh, it will now give it that, uh, that color that uh, that you need to have for the tail. And of course, uh, Charlie says the color fades and he's fish this enough to know that uh, Sharpie's not going to last forever. So uh, you might want to carry a Sharpie around and if uh, it does fade, either change the shrimp uh, or, uh, you know, get it, uh, get it bright again. Uh, once it's done, that's pretty much it. This fly is uh, really quick. Uh, the hardest part is going to be the braiding. Uh, and uh, if you notice the the red thread at the tail and the red uh, tail itself uh, match, as you go to different uh, patterns, uh, you're going to go ahead and basically, uh, you know, change the color of the thread that uh, to match the... Uh, the color that you're going to put on the on the tail that's a little attractant uh the one that charlie likes the most is that white with the red tail uh but this uh one that we tied today that particular color to me seems like it's really good to match for for redfish okay well i hope uh we get to see you all uh this coming week and learn how to tie this particular fly from the master. So thank you all very much and we'll catch you all on the next one.